Can we talk about Providence? Can Please. We, can we talk about the just the fact that Al Durham is called by Ed Cooley the closer? And this guy will be nowhere to be found. Yeah. Hasn't taken a shot all game. And then, like you said, we get into crunch time and all of a sudden Al Durham's got like pivotal free throws that he somehow knocks down. Uh -huh. I mean, in general, this whole team in this whole game against Xavier that we're talking about, I mean, they felt like they were dead Triple to rights. Triple overtime win. They felt like they were dead to rights yep. multiple times during regulation, though, before we even got to overtime. And somehow or another, first we get the leaky roof. That was the first stoppage, and that was in regulation. We have about two minutes to go in the game, and water is coming down from the duck, from the roof. We have to stop. There's this whole debate. They're, they're, they cut back to the studio. Do they play? Do they not play? Is it safe to play? They decide that the towel boys are going to come out and clean up the water while the one team's on the other. It reminded the me of the uh, the aircraft carrier game. Yeah. <laughs> Where it was just like, are we sure we should be doing this? Is, that, yeah, is this safe? And then there was even a suggestion to go play it in another gym, in the volleyball gym, just because, you know, they had to finish the game, but yeah. there would be no cameras there. So we went probably the most exciting, thrilling game of the season. Almost. <laughs> I love the idea. Would not have been televised. I love the idea. They play in the volleyball. Ball, and then like John Fanta has got his iPhone and he's just like, <laughs> he's just streaming it. <laughs> it's a Walking triple OT <laughs> thriller. We're outside the dunk. He's, he's, he's just, that, that, that's how it's broadcast to, Honestly. To, the, uh, to the world. Yeah, this is a, uh, it was chaos. Providence's 11th win. Shout out to our guy, Evan uh, Miyakawa, who is, uh, who's becoming my favorite statistician in college basketball. Pointed out this is the 11th, that, Kim Palm. 11th win for Providence by five or fewer or in overtime. So mm -hmm. he defines a close game. If you win by five or the game goes in overtime, um, they've won 11 games like that this year. Wow. It's insane. And they've only lost three games. So it's like, it'd be one thing if they just played in a lot of close games and sometimes it, it works out for them. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it always works out for them. <laughs> it really does. It's, 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 it's staggering. Jared Bynum plays 43 minutes off the bench and has 27 points. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he's averaging 23 points per game in his last six games and he doesn't even start for him. It's this, this team is comical. And, uh, I, I, I do say that lovingly, like we, we, you know, I, I don't think they're bad, but every time I watch Providence, it's like, if you same thing, same thing as like, I just said about Ohio state, you cover time and score. You don't like focus on who's waiting, whatever. You're just like kind of watching it and taking it in. <laughs> Nothing about this team wows you. It's just like at the very end, they, they somehow flip a switch and, and, it, it's it's hilarious now, like because you it, it feels to me like the Providence uh, fan base is sort of split. Where like half of them, um, this probably isn't true, but this is my perception. Where like half of them feel like this is awesome and we're lucky and uh, let's just lean into it, and the other half are like, f including Ed Cooley, are fighting for more respect. Like quit quit blaming it on luck. Like we're actually talented, we're actually good. Yeah. But then every time you get a chance to prove it, you're playing at Butler, you're playing DePaul at home. <laughs> it's like all right, well if you're talented, like. Just, just win by 20. Just go win by 20. Like, we don't want to do that. It's like, that's Why not would we what, do that? That's not what we do. We put on a show, and <laughs> it did feel like, I mean, it was quite the scene. You know what I mean? Especially during the intermission while they decided if they were going to, you know, play in the, you know, with the leaky roof or not. The crowd's insane there. I mean, they really are. Insane, they, yeah. they are. Yeah. They're like singing songs. I mean, Grand Canyon is looking at this, and they are so jealous. This is what Grand Canyon wishes they could be on the mainstream. So shout out to the Providence fans. And uh, I think in March, I was they were going to be a stay away from me. You know, I was like, I, I cannot believe, I cannot let luck ride, but they're a team of destiny. I'm I'm riding them to the, I elite. don't know. I don't know. I'm how riding you, them to the elite eight. I don't know how you can watch a roof <laughs> leak at the perfect time. Exactly. Like the, if you're not a team of destiny is what I'm saying. So I'm I am officially if in. if this is any other team and that happens I I a hundred percent believe that someone like cracked or like there's a guy standing on the roof with like a hammer yeah. and a yeah flathead. If this is Cameron indoor yes. yes Savarino's on the roof and he is and they're waiting for the call and they're okay we're down three with two forty three all right do it now do, do, do it now and then you just let the roof leak but it's Providence so I'm like no no it, it actually makes ton of, a ton of sense that there's an active god at the perfect time in this yes. game that call, that paused the game. Like the Cubs Indians World Series Game Seven, that like you know, yeah, as yeah. your balls are getting tight, like everyone just take, take a, a breath. deep breath. Yeah, let's focus. A little rain delay. And, yeah, let, let's come out and uh, win the game. It, it uh, I don't. It's it's amazing. God was it's weeping amazing. because he was like, I did it again. You know what else? The uh, <laughs> the the race of sixty nine failed in this one. Uh you know? yeah yeah yeah. Ninety three point seven percent of the time. What can we which do? shows even more that that you know. Yeah. There's there's 
some there's divine intervention. Yeah, there's divine intervention going on. This game almost Providence. got a hundred points, and also there was uh, the Colorado State Wyoming game was coming on after this, and it literally was in the second half with six minutes to go before the game could even come on because of the triple overtime. It was in the second half with six minutes left. W- once the the Providence Xavier game was finally done after triple overtime <laughs> because of the roof. You know what I mean? You got to deal with the roof leak time. It's like the longest game. In the history of college basketball. I literally was thinking to myself how hilarious it would be if you're a Wyoming or a Colorado State fan and you just been watching Providence. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to watch the last six minutes of your team. Uh, Providence, by the way, Providence, I got confirmation. Saturday against Creighton, they Oof. they win that. They win the Big East. They don't need to because wow. they have two games left. Saturday at home against Creighton, and they play at Villanova, um, which we, you know, we we probably aren't expecting them to beat Villanova, at Villanova I don't especially so. if it comes down to like if going into that game it's like if Villanova wins their biggest champions if if Providence wins their biggest champions congrats Villa- Villanova congratulations to Villanova yes you've Villanova's done it again. printing the shirts <laughs> you've done it again yeah Villanova like during they're already the- wearing the shirts so when the game starts yeah, the crowd during- <laughs> they're on the chairs during Jay Wright's <laughs> pregame speech the managers are taping up like uh, plastic on the lockers for the yeah. champagne yes. after the game yeah exactly <laughs> um. But they don't have to worry about that. Providence doesn't have to worry about that. You beat Creighton at home, it's over. You, you. I, I think Villanova might still get a share. I don't know. There's, there's the Mickey Mouse uh, COVID standings where yeah. like Villanova plays more games. So I don't know if, if, if Providence beats Creighton, I don't know if Villanova still has a chance at a share. I just know that Providence gets a share at least. At least, and that'll so be the first time if, ever. If Providence beats Creighton, they get a cut down that. So that's all I know. Creighton plays spoiler, by the way. <laughs> you think so? No, they, I mean just in general, like as oh, a program. Oh, I thought that, you were predicting that, that they're gonna. I mean. Is, I, I kind of, the, yeah. The most Providence move would be to lose to Creighton and then beat Villanova some miraculously, yes. you know. In a triple overtime. Triple overtime. Top yeah. 10 tilt. Top 10 t- <laughs> <laughs> That's Providence. Um, Hilarious. It's, it's, there's no other way to describe this Providence season. It's just like. It's, it's great for it's Ed so Cooley because like I said, he should be the hottest name like for every, every coaching search should have yeah. Ed Cooley in it. Yeah. Which is which is great. Yeah. I love Ed Cooley. Hey there. Thanks for watching Titus and Tate. For the full friend of the program experience, subscribe right below and come join us for all things college basketball. The action is heating up. Come join Titus and Tate.